we don't know about what Disney is teaching us. They don't teach us up until a certain point. They don't teach us past marriage. <laughs> they don't teach no, but this is my point. Marriage. They teach us to the point of getting the, getting getting the girl, getting the guy, getting the relationship. That yeah. and that's the bit I'm talking about. It's like that's the, the fun go- bit. Yeah, yeah. And people and, will say that's the hard bit, though. Some people have been saying that that's the hard bit, but I think that's I'm the fun gonna, bit. I'm gonna get to that bit. That's the fun bit, but like, <laughs> it wasn't the goal. Hmm. The goal was to have a working, breathing, living relationship. Yeah. Not to get the relationship. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. Welcome back to another episode of the Couple School Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by the lady of self-love herself. Charlie Lawrence. Hi guys. It's not about me today, it's over to you. <laughs> it's like a mic drop, like throw the back. Yes, so I got asked the question and I was saying to Andrew, like, what's his thoughts on it? So we thought we'd bring it to the podcast. Why yes. not bring it to the podcast? So the question is, what does hard mean when people talk about relationships being hard? Oh my god, first. You're going first. I've I've said the question. <laughs> Okay, I, I, it's funny, this, this, this is a recurring question I've had in many different forums. Oddly enough, one, the last, the last time I was actually walking past a barbershop and guys were talking about it. So it just shows it's not just women that are deliberating over these things, it's also guys as well. And what I said in response to it was, it's not that, well, what does hard mean? Hard, hard it's not that it's hard in a relationship, it's just that people, are so fixated on the relationship being the goal that they expect it to be easy after you've attained the person. Mm. You know? And what they don't realise is that the relationship is a bolt-on to life. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't life doesn't stop being challenging because challenging is life itself. Mm. So when you get past the point of finding someone to do life with, understand that you've got joint challenges to overcome now. So it doesn't ever stop being hard at all you've always got work to do if that makes sense yeah i mean i think that i think sometimes people say hard because it's something they're not used to and i think we forget that when i give this example i remember when i first split up my ex-husband and i was like you know i'm gonna do this on my own blah blah it was all self-empowerment it was all great self-love it was great no one could tell me nothing i was like you can chat to me <laughs> no one can chat to me i know what i'm on this is it blah now you, blah now you know what the man you can chat to me <laughs> <laughs> what's our youtube channel on that you can no chat one, like, to me no one can chat to me i was like really like buzzing from like self-love and i was like you know i'm ready for a relationship boom boom a relationship happens you're like well this is lovely and then you realize actually there's certain things you cannot work on on your own. Once somebody enters your orbit, you then have to work around and get to know and understand that person. And so the hard work is actually when you are learning how the other person exists in the world, how you exist in the world, and how you exist together in your world. That's the hard bit. But is it really hard? I don't know. We just say it's hard because I don't know if it's really hard. It's just where it is. It's like, when you have a child, a baby, so cute, so lovely, then they start teething. Before you even get to the teething, <laughs> they start screaming. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I, 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 our youngest, I, I absolutely adore him to an atomic level. Like he literally, most days, is my literal heartbeat because he's so affectionate. But that boy there has got the temperament of his dad times 10 and then <laughs> condense it. Like So he, when he goes... He goes, like, he's shaking baby gates, he's kicking walls, like, and uh, when that, when, when you're, I say, what I say to people when people go, oh, what's the biggest difference between not having a child and having a child? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you can't just go anymore. Yeah. That's the biggest difference I can put across to someone. Like, you can't, you can no you and your partner can no longer just pick, get up and go anywhere because... You've got to make sure that that baby's prepped for the baby bags packed, you've got yeah. enough nappies, pseudo cream, all the wipes in the world you could possibly need as well, then the bottles, the food that like you need you can your no your long your life can no longer be ad hoc. That's the biggest difference between being single to even coupled with someone to mm. therefore then having a kid. And I use that as an example for when you're talking about 
going from being single to, and I've said this before, going single to being in a couple. You can you can't be single you in a relationship. Mm. It, it, it doesn't work because, as you said, everything you would normally do as a single person, you now have to consider another person. Yeah, and that's the, that's the nature of being in a plus one relationship, and it's both it's both sides. Yeah. So when you get into a relationship, the, and I think you're right, the word hard, I would change that for work because work is required. Like yeah. it's not that we get into a relationship and all of a sudden, oh my days, happy days, sunbathing and what have you. Like you're now dealing with another person in your universe and the two of you, as you said, have got to work out how you independently work in that universe and how you collectively work in that mm-hmm. universe. And then you've got to deal with each person ev- evolving at different rates, but still staying connected. Yeah. You know? So when people say it's hard, I think they, the, I would replace the word hard with work. And have people understand that like Disney don't exist. Yeah, Disney don't I exist. I mean, we don't know about what Disney's teaching us. They don't teach us up until a certain point. They don't teach us <laughs> past marriage. <laughs> they don't teach but but this is my point. Marriage. They teach us to the point of getting the, getting getting the girl, getting the guy, getting a relationship. That yeah, and that's the bit I'm talking about. It's like that's the, the fun bit. Go- yeah, yeah, and people and, will say that's the hard bit though. Some people have been saying that that's the hard bit, but I think that's I'm the fun g- bit. I'm gonna get to that bit. That's the fun bit, but like. <laughs> It wasn't the goal. Hmm. The goal was to have a working, breathing, living relationship. Yeah. Not to get the relationship. And I think that's the 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 mis that's the misalignment of perception that people have is they're going because they 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 see the whole world out there in the dating world as being this volatile situation, which it is. Um, to find the person, it takes so much effort to find the person that it feels like when you find the person that should be over. But it's not. It's the turning of a page, and now you've got, as we said, us coexisting chapter yeah. to deal with, and all the stuff that goes with that. Yeah, right? I think the specific things that people think are hard is where is the communication, is learning how to communicate with the person that you're now with, mm-hmm. and also like just you're going like the disagreements. Like the thing is, I think sometimes people think you're in a relationship, you're going to agree, like you're, yes. you're just going to agree, yeah. like. But but you should agree with me. Like, no, we have different opinions, we have different ideas, and we need to agree. And I will never forget, this was a while ago now, and I um, read something that was like saying, the best relationships are relationships where people know how to fight well. Um, and mm. if you know how to resolve conflict, that is the best relationships, because you can't avoid conflict, it's going to happen. It's just, how do you resolve conflict? And how do you both resolve conflict? And if you understand each other, and how that person resolves conflict, how you and you and you marry the two, it's not really hard. You just have your disagreement and you just move on. And I think the hard thing is the communication, is the habits that you have to then bring into your orbit. It's putting everything into your orbit and having to deal with that effectively. I think that is what people are considering hard. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily hard. I don't think hard exists. I just think it's continued challenge. Challenge, yeah. Um, because, and I think it's about your perspective. If you go in, in your perspective into a relationship and go, okay, this is hard. That's mm. a decision. You've now decided this is hard. Yeah. So it's not going to be anything else other than what you've decided it's going to be. Yeah. You've now called it hard and described it as hard and dictated it shall be hard from here, here on out. If your perspective is this is challenging, a challenge is something that can be won, that can be overcome, that can be got past. Hard just sounds quite dismal, dark, and and, and contagious. I watched a, um, a YouTube video today about conflict and conflict mm-hmm. in relationships. And they were talking about much the same as what you're doing. It's, it's establishing rules of how conflict is handled. Because I think most people expect when they get, as you said, that when you find your person, that the two of you are just going to agree and the worlds are going to align and there's going to be this ray of sunshine that comes out throughout the crowds like Mufasa being held up. I mean, it's going to be that kind of moment where, okay, right where I've found it now and this is my space. But you need to understand, challenge exists within your happiness. You know? Challenge is a part of life because without challenge, we cannot evolve. Nothing changes when everything's working. Yeah, We just go along. It's only when we hit something that doesn't work or doesn't quite work that we start looking at it and going, okay, right, well, how do we solve this? 
And if your perception or perspective on your relationship is, how do we solve this? Yeah. Emphasis on the we, not how do I. And I'm talking to guys mainly when I say that. It's because we have a tendency of being this, we want to be the guy, we want to be the person that solves everything. We have to be the oracle, all answers and what have you. And it's, mm. That's just not how it works because the two, this is not a dictatorship. So the two of you have to, have to work together to go, okay, well, how do we overcome this? That this might be something that you're going through, but because it's in our world, it's we that have to, has to fix it. And you have to maintain that perspective right the way throughout. Mm. You know? And if you can do that and keep that, no matter what the challenge is, then that's how you build that long standing. We're 60 and we've been together for 40 years and we know how to, how we work kind of relationship. Because even when you speak to those older couples, they still bicker. Yeah. But the difference is they know, they know how to bicker with each other. Yeah. So that it doesn't go past bickering. It doesn't get to name calling. It doesn't get to being personal, being, un- offering low blow conversations or yeah. comments. It's about the subject and it's about the moment. And then once the moments, and even if you don't agree and the moment passes, it doesn't get carried past that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think, I don't know. I, another thing that I, I think that I personally, I think has been an aha moment for me personally is understanding that the way we communicate the language and how I interpret things is very different to what has been said. Like interpretation is one thing, right? So it's like something could be said. It could be like, yeah, I don't really like the outfit. He could say that to me and I will go, he thinks I look disgusting. He thinks I look horrible. How could he possibly say such a thing? And women, we do it all the time. We and interpret something different. And what he and said is, I just don't like that particular outfit. outfit. <laughs> all he's talking about is that, not the skin you're in. The outfit you're standing in front of him in, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, but we, but the thing is, we also, the thing is, is that we just have to understand that we, our language is different for a reason. That's just what it is. Just accept it. And as I remember having a conversation with someone um, in my DMs, actually, and I was saying, like, you just have to accept that I interpret things and you have to understand that. So you can't say, oh, I'm wrong. That's just my nature as a woman. Your nature as a man is to go boom, boom, boom. Mine is to figure out why you're saying that. That's just generally what we do. That goes both ways. Yeah, Because exactly. if you flip it on its head and you alter it, like let's say for argument's sake, you, I don't know, you as a guy, you take your, your, your lady out to a restaurant and you plan the whole evening and this and the other. And she says, oh, okay, right, I'll, I'm not really feeling that restaurant. Mm. Like, that's not her saying you weren't <coughs> enough. That's not her saying the planning the wasn't job, right. Yeah. That doesn't, wasn't saying you didn't step up as a man. That wasn't her saying that, you know, the whole evening is fine. But you as a guy could, t- and I, I'm, I'm saying this as a guy, I'm saying this is me. <laughs> it's one of the things I've had to work on for myself. Like, it doesn't mean that you're not enough. Yeah. And, and what I, what I, I, I tend to bump into and I've, a lot of work that I've had to do with myself is to actually hear what the person's saying, not hear what I fear. You know, my fear is that I'm not enough. And for for most of the guys that I speak to, it's an echoing, resounding, strong one. We're happy dealing with anything else apart from it. But the minute you bump into something like that that says, actually, you know what? You're not enough, intelligent enough, strong enough, wealthy enough. This and yeah. like all these things start to bubble to the surface. So you've got to learn to hear what your partner's saying, yeah. not what you fear that they're saying. Yeah, and and. It's funny you mentioned in that con- context of, of, of the, the how, how okay. a woman's dressing and how she feels in what she's wearing, you know? Because a guy will say something quite and in our heads quite harmlessly because we're, we're lateral and logical mm-hmm. thinkers. So to us, we're like, I'm talking about the dress. Yeah. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the dress. Yeah. But, but even that's the man not how she some hears men it. might not even just say, oh, but it's the, like, they will just say, I don't really like that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. And so you then, as a woman, interpret what does that actually mean? That must, like, that, and then we go into a deep dive of. Yeah. But this <laughs> like, is me. Like, I, I say, I, I'm, 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 it's funny. I had this conversation, a very long conversation with a, a, a lady last week mm. about this. And she was talking, we're talking about communication, how you talk with your partners and all the rest of it. And I said to her, look, 
after she'd gone through, and I might go through her particular scenario because it was quite personal, but how she'd gone through a bits and pieces and said to her, look, what it sounds like to me is you're saying things to your other half how you hear them. Yeah. And how it's best for you to hear them. Mm. But that's not best how he receives it. Yeah. So you need to remember the goal in mind. The goal isn't to be heard, it's to be understood. If you're only dealing with how to be heard, your only option is volume. Yeah. Which is why we go into arguments and then we start delving for things that we know are going to have impact because you haven't understood what I'm saying. You haven't heard what I'm saying. But it's about being understood. Mm. You want to be understood by the person that you're talking to. Yeah. That means you have to talk in the frequency that they understand. You have to talk in the disposition that they understand, the position that they understand, the, the situation that they understand. You know, if you know your person is not a public, descriptive or talking individual, mm. then don't bring up relationship stuff in a restaurant that is in a pub that they're in a public <laughs> format where they, you're already going to get their back up. You know what I mean? You might have the uh, feel the urgency within you to go. I just need to talk about this now. But are you trying to be heard or are you trying to be understood? Mm. Because if you're trying to be understood, you know full well in this restaurant setting here. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. He or she is never going to listen to me in here because all they're thinking about is all the eyes that are looking at them having yeah. this intense conversation and what might be overheard and what might be overspilled, etc., etc., etc. Same way with certain people that respond or, or, or like to communicate via text. Mm. If the person you're talking to is a person that deals with stuff over the phone, then you're going to have to understand, right? I want to be understood by said person. So rather than sending a text message, which is comfortable for me, make the phone call. Because to someone that appreciates the phone call, it's going yeah. to look at it and go, right, well, there's no effort in here, which means you don't care. You just sent me this blase text and yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And what did you mean by that? So that and it just unlocks people's fears. Yeah. Right? I think it's also, we have to understand that those things take time. That yeah. is what people mean. When you are saying hard work, that's the hard work. It's understanding, taking the time to understand how you resolve conflict, how you, because I remember Babe always just say how I'm not agreeable. <laughs> Guys, he would say I'm not agreeable. Do you know how offended I would be? Oh, listen. Like, about. He just went up notches in respect for me. Like, I erect the man for the time. I saying agree it. with you all the time. And he's like, no, you don't. And we would have arguments and arguments and arguments about this. Me not agree. And I'm like, I do agree with you. But he wasn't hearing me agree because I would come with some next thing afterwards. So he would make a statement. And rather than say, I agree with you, you'd you're say, right. You'd say, oh, go right. But I would say, yeah, I see where you're coming from. But you know, but, if you look at it from yeah. this angle, blah, 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 blah. And then he would be like, there she goes again. She's not even lit. And so for me, but, and what we've discovered is I'm just someone that looks at all sides of a box. I don't just look at once. If you tell me something, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, but I wonder what it looks like from this angle. And I wonder what it looks like from this angle. Let me just, let me just skip around this box and see what it yeah. looks like. Whereas he's looking at it from, he wants, he's telling me what it looks like from this angle. And I asked you to walk around the box and I asked you to look from the top. I asked you from this angle. So now I've had to learn that I just stop at what he's saying at that particular thing. He never asked me any other perspectives. What do I think about this? And I go, I agree. That's it. Yeah, but the thing is, I, this is one thing I say about, about to people about relationships all the time is that we live in a day and age where the internet has taught us that we can have whatever we want immediately. Mm -hmm. So there's an app for everything out there. Now, if I wanted, right now, if I wanted to get whatever style or function of food that I wanted to, yeah. I could have it delivered to that door in the next 35 minutes. Yeah. Each. Your relationships do not fit that. Yeah. The one component that makes your relationship strong is time. And there's no getting away around it. There's no fast forwarding. And there's no app for it. Chat GPT can't write a script for it. <laughs> like you've got to give your relationship time. You need to learn to deal with your person when they're under stress, when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're remorseful, when they've done something that's nonsense, when they're upset with themselves, when they're kicking themselves, when they're down in the dirt, when they've done something that they wish that they hadn't, when they've lost someone. 
when they've lost something, when they've missed out on mm. something, all of these things that happen in their lives whilst you're there teach you how to deal with them in life. Yeah. And then also teach you, the two of you how to deal with each other when these situations occur in our life together. You can't fast forward it. Mm. And a lot of people, I think, mistake. And that's what I call the work in a relationship. That has been hard. But ironically, that's precisely what you ordered. When you said you wanted a relationship that's going to stand the test of time, just listen to the sentence, the test mm. of time. Like, you are going to be tested throughout the, your time together. Let's not think that your, 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 your relationship can be microwavable, because it's not. Mm. You know, it's a three-course Sunday meal with multiple different options, servings, and fancy bits and pieces on top of it. Yeah. It takes time to prepare. It takes time to shop for. Most importantly, it takes time to cook. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was it was a very interesting question because I think in this day and age, people are really struggling to hold on to relationships for a long period of time. And I do believe a lot of that is every time someone steps about over a boundary or someone pushes mm -hmm. something or... It's like, oh, whoa, 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 like, you know, that's just, that's just, that's not what I can do. I can't do that. And it's kind of like, you're not even learning anything about your relationship. You're not learning anything about the person. You're not learning, like, you know, if, if, if you don't give your partner and yourself the opportunity to fall and then not, and without running away, like, how do you, like, do you get what I mean? How do you grow? Like, how do you learn? Like, I just don't get it. Like, I just think so many times I'm hearing things like, oh, you know, they did this and then this didn't work out for me. Or this happened and this didn't work out for me. So I just had to leave because that's like, you know, <laughs> it's against, it's against my boundaries or it's like, you know, my, it's a non-negotiable. And some of your non-negotiables are crap. I'm just telling you all. Like some of your non-negotiables are going to part of your non-negotiables. We're not going to talk about that now, but we're going to come back on. another time because um, it's a strong subject itself. But like some of them are really crap. You guys have to learn that relationships are challenging. It's just it's and I, it's like what I was saying to you earlier. It's like when you go to a new job, you're not instantly good at the job. You have to spend time in the job, learning, negotiating, working with people you don't necessarily like all of these kind of things before you get really great at that job. And it's like, but, but for some reason, we feel like our relationship should be different. Our relationship should just, just be different. We shouldn't have any challenge. There's, like you make out like you go to work and your boss don't chat to you away and you want to just leave the workplace, but you can't because you're tied in. By a contract. <laughs> you're tied in. Um, and, but with your relationships, you feel like this person's done this, talked to me some type of way, didn't come home on time, didn't think about my feelings, so I'm just going to be out. This, all of that is just ridiculous, like, in my opinion. Hard work, it's, it's not hard work, it's, it's challenging. It is challenging and it's challenging. Every aspect of life is challenging. And I'm a soft life babe, I'm telling you, it's challenging. I am a soft life babe. I've seen the post, <laughs> I've seen the post, I've seen the post. Um, I just think that people have this, we accept that, that other aspects of our life aren't, are going to arrive imperfect. You know, like the job isn't going to be perfect. Mm. The car isn't going to be perfect or the house that I'm looking for. I must compromise in the house because I can't have everything I possibly want in one. So, but then we've got this belief that when we find, when we step into a relationship, that it has to be delivered perfect. Mm. Life in itself is imperfect because it doesn't automatically fit. Mm. Now, something that's going to be, be best for you in for the long run doesn't necessarily have to fit precisely now. If I think about my, the person that I was, Jesus, five years ago, very different to the guy that I am. I I, I am now. Mm. I've got very different beliefs. I've got very different standards i've got very different tolerances i've got very different things that i will that i'd accept if i rewind that 15 years ago now that guy i don't even like it you know so we're talking about here a relationship that was supposed to survive us or sustain us for 15 20 
25 years. Yeah. If the person I was 15 years ago, I don't like, let alone disagree with, why would the relationship for me now be spot on perfect and not require any work but last the same period of time? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. We have this understanding, okay, but we're going to accept it and and this person's going to be our person. Like, like this person's your person for you now. Mm -hmm. They fit your life and your circumstance now perfectly. How long perfect lasts is as long as you are willing to work to maintain perfect. Yeah. That's the easiest way I could possibly put it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, hard in a relationship? It's not hard. Challenge. It's a challenge. But fundamentally, it's what you ask for. You, know, you ask for someone that you can do life with. Well, life is however long life is supposed to last. Everyone's egg timer has a different grade of grade and measure and weight of sand in it. But it's supposed to, we're looking at something that's going to last for years upon years upon years upon years on our evolved and different dimension selves that we're going to go through along with all the challenges that life is going to throw at us. But understand, if you expect life to throw challenges at you, and this thing you're looking to hold on to is supposed to last the same length of time, it's going to have its own challenges along with it. Some completely attached to life itself, others just from the two of you meshing together, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Mm. And it certainly doesn't mean it's something you should throw, you should throw away or run away from. Yeah. You know? Relationships are what they are. They're beautiful. They are. But with that beauty, to keep that beauty there, it takes work. If you take a look at someone painting with a perfect sculpture, you know, they're painting for hours. Yeah. Hours upon hours with various different brush strokes in different dimensions and different directions, sorry using different collaborations of paint to create the right type of shading and what have you, right? Your work, your relationship is a work of art. Yeah. But I understand the first work that comes in there, before the art that everyone can marvel comes to work. Yeah. Agreed. I'm going to leave you on that one because I like that one. Anyway, <laughs> that's our sign for this week. So, hey, I forgot what I was going to say next. Yeah, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's down there. Somewhere. I'm pointing at you down here somewhere. <laughs> and then also don't forget the infamous bell. Ring the bell because that helps us out with the algorithm and lets you know when we're going to be on next. We will be live on Instagram for couple school after school on yeah. Tuesday at half past eight. Come and disagree with Charmaine. <laughs> I think I might actually just call no it that. No one disagrees with I know they me. don't. I know it's because it's scared. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. But anyway. Come join in the conversation. We really do love the after school bit. It's literally the highlight of my week. I do love the conversations and the narratives and the the, the big person that is that jump on, jump on board. We'll be live on Instagram on, on half past eight on the Tuesday, and then also obviously back next week at twelve o'clock on YouTube and across all podcast platforms. I put that in there because Charmaine <laughs> does it so eloquently. Um, yeah, for the next um, next episode of the Couple School Podcast. In the meantime, you guys stay strong. You stay safe. Peace, guys. Thank you.